Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lana and uh, I'm not one to create TBRs for a whole month. I'm very much a mood reader and I actually find that if I plan ahead, the minute I do that, I'm not in the mood to read any of the books that I'm planning, which sucks. That's why I, um, I stick to mood reading and not creating TBRs. However, I do really like the nonfiction initiative that was started by the lovely Olive from A Book Olive. And um, I like it because it's not a readathon. The goal of this is not to read as many nonfiction books as you can in November, but just to, you know, pay more attention to nonfiction, to have an excuse to pick up the nonfiction that's been on your shelves for a while. Um, you know, reading one nonfiction book qualifies, which is great. As I've mentioned, I don't do TBR videos. However, I do want to talk to you about the one book I will 100% read this month because I'm reading it for a buddy read with Rosie. Um, if you want, you can join us. Let me know if you do. And apart from that, I wanted to give you five books from my general nonfiction TBR. These are not books that I'm committing to read this November. I'm not. <laughs> I might pick up one of them. I don't know, but these are just five random books from my general TBR that are nonfiction that I chose uh, because first of all, I, I you know, want to talk about them. Uh, and also because I don't really see anyone else talking about them and uh, maybe it will be something that you might want to pick up. So first of all, the book that I am definitely reading this November for my body read with Rosie is Every Word is a Bird We Teach to Sing by Daniel Temid. Encounters with the Mysteries and Meanings of Language. This is a reread for me. I read it like last year, but I don't, I don't remember much of it. I do remember loving it and it being so fascinating. But this time around, I want to go back in with my tabs, with my pencil for annotations and actually get, you know, the most out of it. Uh, in the back it says, Tamir goes back in time to London to explore the numeric language of his autistic childhood. In Iceland, he learns why the name Blair became a court case. In Canada, he meets one of the world's most accomplished lip readers. He chats with chatbots, contrives an e essay on lipograms, studies the grammar of the telephone, contemplates the significance of disappearing dialects, and corresponds with native Esperanto speakers in their mother tongue. A joyous romp through the world of words, letters, stories, and meanings. It explores the way communication shapes reality. This, I found this book so interesting and so fascinating and I cannot wait to discuss it with Rosie. Okay, uh, now to the five random books from my general nonfiction TBR. I have my notes here, so excuse me. First one is Delusions of Gender, How Our Minds, Society, and Neurosexism Create Difference. This book has been on my radar for a very, very long time. Um, it says that it debunks the myth of hardwired differences between men's and women's brains. Also, Cordelia Fine offers a very different explanation of the dissimilarities between men's and women's behavior. Instead of a male brain and a female brain, Fine gives us a glimpse of plastic, mutable minds that are continuously influenced by cultural assumptions about gender. Basically, it shows how what we consider to be intrinsically intrinsically masculine and feminine has actually very little to do with actual biology it's mostly based on culture and society i find this topic very important and i cannot wait to read about it next up is a book i found on bookstagram and i was so excited about it it's called the faithful executioner life and death honor and shame in the turbulent 16th century by joel f harrington so in the late 1500s, this is the Renaissance era, a man named Franz Schmidt began to do something utterly remarkable for his era. He started keeping a journal. But what makes Schmidt even more compelling to us is his day job. For 45 years, Schmidt was pr a prolific public executioner employed by the state to extract confessions and put convicted criminals to death. In his years of service, he executed 
361 people and tortured, flogged and disfigured hundreds more. Is it possible that a man who practiced such cruelty could also be insightful, compassionate, humane, even progressive? So basically this is a book by the historian Joel F. Harrington as he's reading and analyzing the journal of this executioner. And uh, one of the topics I think that it talks about is the conflicted relationship he had with faith and his day job. Like obviously it's not Christian to be an executioner. <laughs> um, so I think this is just, I think it's just a fascinating read. Number three is Furious Hours, Murder, Fraud, and the Last Trial of Harper Lee by KC Kep or Sepp. For the longest time, I thought this was going to be actually about Harper Lee and uh, her second book because there was a lot of um, drama and mystery about how her second book came to be published. But actually, it's not. It's about a, an Alabama, Alabama. Alabama. The story of an Alabama serial killer and uh, the true crime book that Harper Lee was working on after writing To Kill a Mockingbird. So it has, you know, shocking murders and courtroom drama and also racial politics of the Deep South. It sounds interesting. I love a true crime. Number four, the joy of movement, how exercise helps us find happiness, hope, connection, courage by Kelly McGonigal. If you know me, you know I had to include a self-help book into these because I love them so much. I actually don't like calling them self-help. Um, I don't know why. And I adore Kelly McGonigal. Oh my god. I first heard about her from her um, on an episode of the Goop podcast. She was promoting her book and she was actually talking about this book. And after listening to it, I started reading her books. I read two books already by her and this is the latest one she wrote and I'm very excited about this. It's uh, Kelly McGonigal has a PhD and is a health psychologist and lecturer at the Stanford University. And it says, through her trademark blend of science and storytelling, McGonigal draws on insights from neuroscience, psychology, anthropology, and evolutionary biology, as well as, well as memoirs, ethnographies, and philosophers. She shows how movement is intertwined with some of the most basic human joys, including self-expression, social connection, and mastery, and why it is a powerful antidote to the modern epidemics of depression, anxiety, and loneliness. I love it. It sounds so good. Uh, and number five, Why Won't You Apologize? Healing Big Betrayals and Everyday Hurts by Harriet Lerner. This one came highly recommended and frankly it sounds like exactly like something I would love. It says, Lerner explains what drives both the non-apologizer and the over-apologizer as well as why the people who do the worst things are the least able to own up to it. She helps the injured person resist pressure to forgive too easily and challenges the popular notion that forgiveness is the only path to peace of mind. With her trademark humor and wit, Lerner offers a joyful and sanity saving guide to settling things right. Again, it sounds absolutely perfect for someone like me who loves psychology. Um, anyway, these are the five books that are on my TBR, again, general TBR, not for the month of November. Um, and uh, hopefully you find something here that you might be also interested in. I did try to include you know, different kinds of nonfiction books. If you want to join me and Rosie in our discussion of this book, you can join us. Please join us. Let me know if you want to be a part of the discussion. I'm gonna put in the description below the date that we're doing the discussion um, because I don't remember what it is. I think it's around the 22nd or something. So you have plenty of time to read this book if you so desire. <laughs> Um, anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.